Park Man here. Today I want to introduce a new LD MOS board that I've been working on. This is a single LD MOS transistor and it uses NXP's MRFX 1K80H, which is their 65 volt technology. And I'm going to be demonstrating this amplifier across the entire high frequency band today and this device can run at 65 volts um, today however I'm only capable of running it at about 60 volts you can see from my power supplies I'm at about 60.8 or so 60.9 when I key up the mic um, you can see that it drops down to about 59.7 due to the load on the power supplies and getting about a one volt drop which isn't bad but uh, let's just call it 60 volts um, if you run this at the full 65 volts you will get about 200 watts RMS of additional power so I just wanted to point that out now why am I only running it at 60 volts that's the limitation of my power supplies I can adjust them up to 60 volts. I'm actually uh, using 30 volt power supplies in a series parallel type of configuration so I have enough voltage and current. Um, so here's the new design. Um, I've uh, decided to go ahead and redesign the output transformer for a number of different reasons. I'm going to talk about that for a minute. I was using this transformer which I purchased from ICA Manufacturing and they recently had about a 20 to 22 percent price increase on this so this sells for about $25 now and then you've got to ha add in the handling and the shipping costs um, so what I've decided to do is to build my own transformers and what I'm using here, this, this is the frame of the transformer. Um, I designed these end caps here, these end plates, um, and I source those from my PC board manufacturer, and then I'm using some half inch thin wall copper tubing and material 61 ferrites, as you can see here. And I'm able to crimp the ends of the transformer and I go ahead and solder that to complete the assembly. Um, so that's what I'll be using on this design. This is basically the same transformer that's used in NXP's reference design for this device. So if you pull out their specification for the uh, MRFX1K80H and you look at the reference designs you'll see this transformer is being used. Uh, Material 61 is required for broadband operation. So that's the new transformer um, here. Um, just to point out a couple of the features um, as we go forward um, I'm going to demonstrate it first on my strike a radio at 28 megahertz so that would be 10 meter band and then I'm going to switch over to my Kenwood radio and test it across the entire high frequency band from uh, basically 10 meters on the striker and then we'll go all the way to 80 meters all the way down to 80 meters on the Kenwood okay so let's start with the striker first um, We'll go ahead and I already showed the voltage when we key up we do get a drop okay and the current there you can see a little over 25 amps and let's take a look at the dead key it's about 1200 watts or so RMS dead key and Let's take a look at the swing or the peak. Okay, the PEP. I do have a peaking kit in my bird meter, a genuine bird peaking kit, so we can take a look 
at the swing here. Audio, audio, check, 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 check. Audio, 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 audio. So we can see about 2,000 watts PEP. And again, that's with my striker radio. Um, I've got a 2,500 watt slug, as you can see there. Um, and the PEP is about 2,000 watts. So now I'm going to switch over to my Kenwood and talk a little bit about the features on the board and demonstrate it across the entire high frequency band. All right, so now I'm back. I'm going to be demonstrating the RF board now using my Kenwood transceiver. I'm going to start at 12 meters since I've already demonstrated 10 meters on my striker radio and we're going to go all the way to 80 meters and before I show the power output just wanted to talk briefly about the board I'm using an input transformer okay to go from high impedance which is the 50 ohm impedance of the transceiver to low impedance which is the input impedance of the transistor I'm using a turns ratio of 2, so the impedance ratio is 2 squared or 4, so 4 to 1 impedance ratio on the input side. Uh, for stabilization, I'm using two series gate resistors or dampening resistors for gate stability, and also I'm using gate shunt resistance as well to stabilize the input side of the transistor to prevent oscillation. I have individual bias adjustments like I have on all my other boards. I'm using Zener diodes to regulate and also for temperature compensation. On the output side, I already talked about the new output transformer. Basically, it's based on the reference design in the NXP specification. I've got a tuning capacitor across here. And then the 50 volts is pretty much the same circuit that I've been using. I've got some filtration there and a large RF choke here. So design topology is similar to my other boards. Uh, it does have a, a new transformer, um, which uh, performs quite nicely. The IMD is about minus 28 dB, which is excellent for uh, LDMOS technology. So we'll go ahead now and we'll demonstrate the power output across the band starting with as I said 12 meters and I'm going to show the current drawer and also the RMS power output as I as I step through the band. Okay so let me just go ahead and start the demonstration okay so there I'm drawing about 30 amps and I've got uh, about 1200 1250 watts on the output okay and again that's at 12 meters so let me go ahead and step this down now um, we'll go ahead and go to 15 meters 21 megahertz and this radio is auto-tuned um, the input SWRs are quite good um, 1.1 to 1.3 across the whole band so you really won't need any kind of uh, antenna tuner or matcher on that side and also the reflected power um, is, is quite low so we got a good match on the output side as well across the entire band um, I'll go ahead and uh, demonstrate that as we as we go along here. So now I'm on 21 meters, as you can see there, and we'll adjust the power output here. So again, 30 amps, and it looks like maybe around 1250 again. Um, I'm going to uh, just show the power output now. The, the current drawer is pretty flat across the band, um, just 30, 30 amps or so, plus or minus a couple of amps. Um, so 
Uh, just to reduce the time in the video, we'll just show the RMS power output. When I say RMS, I, I uh, also mean average. Um, bird meter gives us average power, but uh, the average power is actually the RMS. Um, so call it either one. I'm okay with that. All right, so now we're going to go basically to 20 meters, which is 14 megahertz. So you can see we have 14 megahertz set up there. Um, again, it is auto tune. And we'll go ahead and demonstrate the power output. As we adjust here, you can see again a little over 1250. And the current drawer is the same. Okay, so now we're going to go down to 10 meters. Actually, it's 10.01, so bear with me here a minute. There we are. Okay, so 10.01 starts the 30-meter uh, band. Okay. So we will transmit. And again, about 1250, 1200 there, a little lower. Alright, and we're going to go down to 7 meters, okay, that will be the 40 meter band, so you can see 7 meters there, or 7 megahertz, rather 40 meters there, okay, and we'll go ahead and adjust the power output here and you can see I got about a thousand or so there it's a little little less power on the lower side okay and then I'm gonna go down to 80 meters So here I'm at 3.65, which is the uh, center of the 80 meter band here. And we'll go ahead and demonstrate the power output as well. So there again, I'm at about 30 amps and about a thousand watts or so um, so the power output on the, the lower end um, is a little under the 12 1200 1250 uh, that's because i i tuned it for the high side um, i can actually tune this anywhere you'd like um, on the low side or the or the high side um, but i tuned it for the, the center of the band uh, more toward the high side Okay, so that's the demonstration. As I said, I'm running it at 60 volts. If you run it at 65 volts, you will get about 200 watts of additional power output. Um, so that's the demonstration. I'll be uh, listing these for sale. Uh, it will be $549 uh, plus shipping, $19.95, and that's the complete price with the transistor okay um, I'm no longer offering the heat spreaders so that's the price of the board fully assembled fully tuned and fully tested thank you RF man all right I'm back as I watched the video I realized I did not show the reflected output power so I'll go ahead and do that now I'm just going to show it in the center of the band there so you see I'm at uh, 14 megahertz 20 meters and we'll go ahead and show first the full power output there you see a little over 1250 
And now we'll go ahead and rotate the slug here. Okay. And we'll go ahead and uh, key up again. Sorry, this is difficult to do with one hand on the camera and the other hand on the mic, but uh, we'll go ahead and... Okay, you can see the needle hardly moves, so the reflected power is quite low. It's a good match, and it's that way across the band. So, again, RF man, thank you.